Trump's peace plan for Ukraine explained. Donald Trump was declared winner of the US presidential election. Trump has repeatedly vowed that one of his first tasks as president will be to end the war in Ukraine, insisting that the war would have never started had he won in 2020, and promising that he would Let's end see. the war Let's in, see. quote, 24 hours. The problem so with promises like this is you have to also do them. Even though I think we're reaching a level where even if Trump is breaking all his promises, still no one cares. They will still vote for him. That's the level now. video, we're going to explain why Trump wants to end the war in Ukraine his plan to do so, and how he would manage to coax Zelensky and Putin to the table. Before we get into his peace plan, let's quickly explain why Trump is so keen to end the war. Now, this is in part because Trump is a self-declared isolationist, and ending the war, or winding down support for Ukraine, plays well to his base. Because as of December last year, 48% of Republicans believed that the US was providing too much support to Ukraine, and this figure has insanity, insanity. grown since then. But Trump, or at least his allies, also have a Fucking deeper mental. geostrategic motivation. A reason and it's all fake. When the Ukraine war started and the Republicans would have been in office, they would have supported Ukraine, and then the Democrats will be against it. You're just always against the current thing, opposition. You always want to catch votes. Yeah, guys, this money shall go to Americans. Vote for me. <laughs> Research paper it's just written fucking the American yapping. First Policy Institute by two of Trump's former national security chiefs gives us some idea of how Trump and co might be thinking about it. According to the paper, there are essentially three reasons they want to end the war. Firstly, they just see little chance of Ukraine actually winning, given the stagnant front lines. Secondly, a prolonged conflict risks strengthening the alliance between Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea, as indicated by NATO's recent report of over 10,000 North Korean troops being stationed in Russia following a defense deal. And thirdly, That's the so US crazy, just man. has low ammunition stockpiles and needs to conserve resources for a potential conflict with China. This is something that former Trump... Shut up! The USA has not enough ammunition. That's not real. That's not real. I don't believe that for a second. That the USA has ammunition issues, man. With 800 billion budget. Nah, bullshit. Advisor Elbridge Colby bullshit. often talks about. Never, ever, As ever. As a result of sending military aid to support both Israel and Ukraine, America's ammunition and weapons stockpiles are running alarmingly low. And the Rand Corporation recently estimated that in the event of a war over Taiwan... If that's real, we should all invest in ammunition uh, factories. The US could exhaust its ammunition stockpiles within just three to four weeks. Not only will replenishing Washington's Shut ammunition up. infantry take years... Shut up! You go to a single house in Texas, you already have one million bullets. But Shut the supply up. chain has become overly dependent on China and Russia for its key components, putting the US industrial base in a precarious position. Anyway, that's why Trump wants to end the war. Now let's take a look at how he actually wants to do it. So far, Trump has declined to give too many specific details about his plan. But fortunately for us, his advisors and allies haven't been so tight-lipped. In an interview with The Sean Ryan Show in September, Trump's vice president, J.D. Vance, laid out Trump's plans pretty clearly. Broadly speaking, there were two elements to Vance's peace plan in Ukraine. First, a complete ceasefire along the current front line, which stretches about 1,300... I always wonder if America even has that power to demand this. And second, Ukrainian neutrality. According to Vance, the first bit, a freeze along the current front lines, would pay... Wouldn't that be a victory for Russia, though? Ukraine is still neutral, not EU or NATO. You just took all that land, which is the doctrine of Vladimir Putin. Putin is always take a bit. What if Trump is really the Russian agent? For one sec, that's just fucking meme a bit, okay? You're Vladimir Putin. You realize you're fucking up in Ukraine. You fucked it up. No, everybody knows. What if the best way to keep your face as a dictator is, yeah, put, uh, Trump said we're only getting the eastern provinces. Oh, that really sucks. <laughs> Doesn't this all play into his cards? Isn't this really helping Putin? It really selfs the reputation of Putin. Presumably and his face. into the one between North and South Korea. And then he can be like, oh, I'm such a peace-loving man. Me and Trump, we made peace. Zelensky, he wanted war. It's about four kilometers wide and heavily fortified. This implies Ukraine giving up about a fifth of its land, which is currently controlled by Russia. This includes Crimea, which Russia annexed in 2014, about 80% of the Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts, and about 70% of the southern Zaporizhia and Kherson oblasts. This actually brings us to the second point of Trump's possible peace plan, as outlined by Vance, Ukraine's neutrality. In other words, Trump, That's Vance, and Trump ally Elon Musk, who suggested something similar in late 2022. I don't know if I'm crazy here, but should JD Vance and Elon Musk decide the fate, the fate of fucking Ukraine? Should these two make decisions on that? 
think the Ukraine shouldn't join NATO. Both being similar in- Dicko, that's a fucking poll on Twitter that only has conservative Muppets left now. That old suck Elon Musk's dick, man. Great poll, man. We should re-listen to that poll. It's a great poll, man. think the Ukraine shouldn't join NATO. Both to avoid dragging the West into World War Three and to avoid upsetting Putin. Who's yeah, we shouldn't help Poland. What the fuck? Let Hitler have Poland. What's going to go wrong? It's going to be no problem. There will be no war. Long been opposed to Maybe we can give Hitler, uh, Putin, some land in Africa? Leaving Russia's so-called sphere of influence. Speaking on the All In podcast this June, Trump said that Biden's hostile attitude towards Russia and America's decision to dangle NATO membership in front of Ukraine was, quote, a mistake. Hope you had a nice meal, Dami. This all shows one thing to me. One thing which I think will never happen. Europe needs to find us cojones, Junge. How the fuck are we Europeans? Dependent on Mr. Orange crazy maniac man to make all decisions for our eastern neighbors here. This is insanity, bro. Since day one, since this day started, I'm so disappointed in the EU. What fucking pussies we are, bro. Why the war started. According to a report by the Wall Street Journal, Trump won't necessarily rule out Ukraine's accession to NATO entirely. But Trump tried to get NATO to spend more and be serious, but everyone criticized him. We just checked it last stream, the statistics uh, with the stance of 2024. Pretty much every NATO country is now above 2%. There's not many countries left under 2%. I think Croatia, Spain is very much under it, but everyone is over 2% now. But would suggest delaying it by at least 20 years. Now, this peace plan will likely include some kind of enforcement mechanisms, like deploying peacekeeping troops on the ground. However, Trump has long argued that Europe doesn't pull its weight in defense. Take a look. I just talked about this. I just told you. That Europe would most likely have to. 2020, this is 2024. Yeah, uh, we just looked at this. There you go. Tommy K News knows his facts. And everybody is kind of now over 2%. Croatia, Portugal, Italy, Canada, Belgium, Luxembourg, Slovenia, and Spain. Very bad. Spain is... Pick up the bill. Was useless. ...its troops. So that's the plan. But how would Trump actually get Ukraine and Russia to agree to it, given that neither side is currently keen on negotiating? Well, Trump would probably force Ukraine to the negotiating <laughs> table by threatening to end or significantly reduce its military aid. For context, since the start of the war, the US has spent more than $70 billion in military aid. In uh, three years, spent 70 billion, where in these three years, the defense budget was 2.4 trillion. Look, man, I wasn't the best of maths. I wasn't the best of maths, but... And unless Europe really stepped up, it's hard to see Ukraine's war effort continuing without American support. However, it's less clear how he convinced Russia to agree to it. While you might assume and the way he pulls him in, dude, look however, at that. It's less clear how he can look at Trump's right hand. It's Russia to it. <laughs> While you might assume that Russia will be pretty happy with the plan. After all, it gives them 20 percent of Ukraine and guarantees Ukrainian neutrality. It still falls short of their maximalist war aims, which include. That's... Do you guys agree with this? Does this deal seem good? Yes or no? Ukraine is neutral and Russia keeps all the stuff they took. What do you guys think? Elon Musk poll. The total annexation of the four oblasts claimed by Russia in 2022. Luhansk, Donetsk, Kherson, and Zaporizhia. Russian forces currently don't control- There will be a crazy cold war though. If that happens, it will be a big cold war, man. All of Donetsk, Kherson, or Zaporizhia. I sometimes wonder like legally. So Trump says Ukraine stays neutral, but what if, I'm just, I'm just fantasizing. Cause I always wonder, I, I always don't just want to yap. I want to care about real international law, which I don't know much about. What if Ukraine and the EU still want to work with each other though? And Ukraine wants to join the EU and uh, the EU says yes. What can Trump do about that? He could obviously punish us with some bullshit, but is there any international law that we have to accept what he decides? Putin said he's okay with Ukraine joining EU, but not NATO. If there's a sizable buffer zone. And the oh, wait, he, he said that, yeah? The whole thing about this is it's so crazy how so many lives and so much of human history depends on one crazy Donald Trump. Isn't that insane? And it shows once again that I truly believe the you shouldn't have presidents anymore. Complex countries in a complex world should be led by senates and, and groups like that. There shouldn't be single figures anymore. A single human mind should not have that much power. Kremlin even recently dismissed Trump's claim of a quick peace deal. As it's actually bad for Putin if Ukraine joins the EU because I, I learned that in law school. It's so big if a country joins uh, the first phase of EU. The Balkan countries wanted that really badly and Erdogan wanted that really badly and, and before Erdogan even. Why? Because once you're in the first phase of joining EU, you get eligible for EU funding. You get crazy fucking money, bro. Crazy money you get. You get really good money from the EU for, to build up your infrastructure and shit like that. It's a huge thing. As quote, the realm of fantasy. 
If Putin does refuse Trump's peace plan, it'll be interesting how Trump responds. While many Europeans and Ukrainian leaders worry that he'll just make more concessions to Putin, it's worth noting that in his first term, the entire world gets decided by six swing states in America. Despite some occasionally friendly, the Amish man, the Amish Trump decided, wasn't afraid to put Ukraine. Putin in his place, and was actually the first U.S. president. To he said it two years ago. Okay, there's a link. I got you. Ukraine. Trump you. also imposed sanctions against Russian firms building the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline in Germany, ordered airstrikes on the Russian mercenary groups in Syria and withdrew from multiple nuclear treaties. Trump also said in an interview with Fox News last year that he'd actually step up support for Ukraine in order to force Russia to acquiesce, saying, quote, I'd tell Putin, if you don't make a deal, we're going to give them a lot more than they ever could. <laughs> I'd like to see that, man. That's going to be so interesting. Keep it up. That's a long time ago, though, July 23. All in all, neither Ukraine or Russia would be immediately keen on the deal. And it's an open question as to whether Trump would be able to leverage them into it. Yeah, does Trump even have the power to but do this? He's certainly pretty intent on trying to do so. This is also something that's been discussed in Europe for a long time, too. Hungary's Viktor Orban actually warned before the election Don't cry, that were Trump to win, EU would need to fundamentally change their approach to Russia, with 48 different news outlets reporting... I know, he's doing a sponsorship. Alone.